I got a poem in my pocket, a pocket full of poems, words in my brain, and these words need home, so I scribble, I scrabble, I string them all together, I keep them in my pocket just in case of bad weather, so when I'm waiting in line and I need to pass time, I just whip out a rhyme and read the poem from my pocket, I got two in the front, one in the back, I even wrote a poem on a wrapper from a snack, Poems, all these poems, they keep coming through my head. It's the stuffing in my pillow and it's time to go to bed. But the best place for them, so I know I never drop it, right by my side, here in my pocket. That was a poem called Poem in Your Pocket, a poem that I wrote in celebration of Poem in Your Pocket Day, which takes place in April, which is also National Poetry Month. And I am coming to you during National Poetry Month to uh, talk about some poems, talk about some good writing ideas that may help you break the wall down and get, the wall. and get some of these words on paper. My name is Mr. B. I am a third grade teacher at Roosevelt Elementary School and I am also a poet and the author of the book, Said the Paper to the Pen. So one of the poems that we're gonna do today is called, This is Just to Say. A poet named William Carlos Williams, who is actually from New Jersey. Give it up for New Jersey. <laughs> and he wrote this poem in 1930. Four. Can you guys do the math on that? 2020 minus 1934. Do it real quick. The answer is yes. A long time ago. And it's an apology poem. But there's many different interpretations to the poem. But my interpretation is, well, I'm not sure this guy really meant the apology. So if you've never heard the poem, um, I'm going to read it for you. This is just to say, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox, which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious, so sweet, and so cold. Hmm. This guy, William Carlos Williams, he came home in the in, in the ice box and he was a little hungry maybe after work or something so he came home he went to the refrigerator and he saw these plums that were just sitting there and they were just looking all juicy and delicious and he couldn't resist himself he knew that they weren't his he knew he he knew it he did he knew what he did so he ate them even though they were saving it for breakfast So the one thing that I noticed in William Carlos Williams' poem that he starts off by saying, this is just to say. So he says, this is just to say. And then he goes on and he starts talking about, this is just to say whatever he did wrong. And he explains it in detail. And then at one point, He'll yell the word, forgive me, because he's asking for forgiveness. Forgive me. And then he gives his reason why. He gives his reason why. So the, the two things in our false apology poem from William Carlos Williams that we're going to write is we're going to notice that he said, this is just to say and forgive me. As a writer, it's very important that we come up with a list to organize our thoughts of some ideas of what we can apologize for. So I'm thinking, you know, we can do objects, we can do reasons why we're apologizing, like maybe one of the reasons you did not clean, you didn't clean your room. Uh, another reason you could apologize for is you kicked your 
little bro or sister out of your room. Maybe you're apologizing, but not really apologizing for kicking your little bro or sister out of your room. Or you could apologize to some objects. Maybe you would talk to a pencil. Maybe you would apologize for constantly breaking or sharpening a pencil. Or maybe you could apologize to a crayon. You could apologize maybe for not using the crayon that much or breaking the crayon or using the crayon too much, not using it enough. Um, the reason why I'm thinking of that is because I just recently read The Day the Crayons Quit to my class. So come up with a list of things, a list of what you think you can apologize for. And I'm going to use uh, some examples from my classroom from the book that we wrote here called This Is Just To Say. And uh, these are poems that say sorry, but not sorry. So I'm going to read to you my two favorite poems from this book. These are students who are now going into sixth grade. I love sharing their writing and keeping it forever. That's one of the reasons why I make these books. This is just to say, I'm sorry for eating the last honey barbecue chicken wing a few weeks ago at Pizza Hut when my mom was showing you pictures of poodles. I'm sure you were going to eat it in a few seconds. It looks so delicious. Forgive me. I felt like the chicken wing was yelling, eat me now. The honey sauce was so flavorful, so hot. My mouth was burning by Trinity. <laughs> One of the things I love about this poem is that she says, uh, she's very specific at where she was. She said, eating the last honey barbecue chicken wing a few weeks ago at Pizza Hut when my mom was showing you pictures of poodles. She really, really gave a good visualization there. She even gave the flavor of wing. Who doesn't love a good honey barbecue wing? And she said where they were at Pizza Hut. They have a pretty good wings. And what was her mom doing with the girl to distract her? She was showing her poodles. So that part right there stands out to me because it was a great visual. And then she says, forgive me. I felt like the chicken wing was yelling, eat me now, eat me now. I love that part. It shows personification. Personification is when you bring an object to life that can't speak, and now it's speaking to you. So she's saying the chicken was screaming, eat me now, eat me now. And uh, it was just a great piece of writing. So that's one example, and this is from a third grade student. So I know anybody can do it. Second grade, third grade, fourth grade. Fifth grade. First graders, give it a shot. There was a student in my class, he was a boxer, and his thought was, what if I write an apology to my boxing gloves because I'm always using them to hit the punching bag or to spar or to hit the wall when I'm in my boxing class? So this is the poem that he came up with. This is just to say, sorry for hitting you so hard on the boxing dummy that looks like a crazy old man at Subway. Sorry I hit that sick kid in, a, in the nose with a left hook. Splat! I feel bad his gross snot covered your red fist with the black writing that said, be cool. Forgive me for punching the gym wall. Pow! Crack! Pop! It hurts you more than it hurt me. If you had teeth, they would be gone. Bye, Ryan. <laughs> that, it's amazing. It has everything in it. He has personification when he was talking about hitting the, the, the apologizing to the gloves and hitting the bag so hard. He had onomatopoeia, splat, pow, crack, pop. He had imagery when he said, when I hit the sick kid in the nose with the left hook, splat. I feel bad his gross snot covered your red fist with the black writing that said, be cool. So he described the boxing gloves and what was written across it. That is an amazing apology poem. So these are some examples from the book that I wrote, said the paper to the pen. 
Nom, 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 There was a girl in my class. Her name was Nicole. And she would always bring in these little bite muffins. They are so delicious. And I tell the kids at the beginning of the year, I say, look, Mr. B, he is a pretty greedy guy, okay? He's got this big belly here. If you leave your snack unattended, there is a chance it could magically disappear. So one day she left her mini bites and uh, they were open and I, I, I ate them. I, I ate them. I, I can't help it. So I wrote a poem apologizing to her. This is just to say for Nicole, the girl I steal snacks from. This is just to say I have eaten the little bite mini crumb cakes that were sitting on your desk, which indeed you were saving for snack time. Forgive me, the cinnamon scent swept slowly across the room, pulling my belly closer, 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 until they leaped out of the bag and into my mouth. Love, your greedy third grade teacher. I just want to add a little bit. I did purchase a box of Little Bite muffins and I shared them with Nicole. So the story does have a happy ending. I like to write from a different point of view occasionally. So I wrote in the voice of a superhero. You guys like superheroes out there? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, of course you do. Let's see if you can guess what superhero would write this poem. This is just to say, I have eaten everything in the icebox. The plums, the apples, the bananas, a dozen eggs, two packs of bacon, leftovers from yesterday's dinner, last week's meatballs, the peanut butter, the jelly, all the bread, and the snack pack chocolate puddings, which indeed you were probably saving for the kids' school lunches. Forgive me, but running around the world at super speed makes a hero hungry. By the way, I also ate that greenish yellow fuzzy thing I thought was a taco, but now I'm not so sure. What superhero do you think that is? It is your turn. You are going to attempt to write your own This Is Just To Say Forgive Me false apology poem. So remember, you can always start it with This Is Just To Say. And then somewhere along the line, you, you got to ask for forgiveness. So you're going to say, forgive me and tell that person this is why you did it and you feel so bad. Maybe we'll mean it. Me, maybe we won't. Sorry, not sorry. Maybe we'll mean it. Me, maybe we won't. We had two great examples of Trinity eating someone's chicken wings. We had a great example of Ryan using personification, apologizing to his boxing gloves. And then we had my example of stealing little bite muffins from uh, Nicole. Sorry, Nicole, if you're watching, I miss you so much. And also I did a superhero one in the, in the voice of a superhero. So it's your turn. I hope you guys enjoy the lesson and uh, have fun writing. Writing does not have to be a chore. Have fun writing. Pick up your pen and write. And remember, like, click, and subscribe.